Hey guys, sorry I couldn't be there today. I'm uh, getting the new online learning system put into place, but I wanted to make sure that you guys still got what was important. And I need to start the class off today by letting you know that the quiz that we were gonna take tomorrow, we are not going to take tomorrow. Instead, we are gonna take it next Wednesday. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that so that we didn't try to do too much tonight and make things happen that way. So a couple things today, what we're gonna talk about is what's known as the circular flow diagram, which explains how resources and products move through our economy. And it is a simple graphical representation to see it, and that's what we wanna do. So your guys' objective today, and hopefully we can hit that, is that you will be able to understand the circular flow diagram of a product and how the circular flow diagram explains economics in a very, very, very simple way. All right, so without further ado, I wanna start by reviewing what a resource is. Resources are a source or supply from which a benefit is produced. When we talk about resources, we're talking about things that we can take and apply to make something, right? When we talk about resources and economics, it's what can we do to use that? How can we use that to make it? It's a source or supply from which a benefit is produced. So when we talk about like, you know, solar power, wind power here, right? We're harnessing through a windmill, the wind power over this body of water here, all right? And that's an important thing for us to be able to kind of realize and understand is that the resource is, is the wind, right? Here's the wind. The resource is the wind. And as it, and it, as it, spins those turbines it produces a power that which we are gaining a benefit from at that point so we're harnessing the wind all right and that's how a resource works we talk about resources i want us to make sure that we still remember the three types of resources that we have the first one is human resource the health education experience training skills and values of people right this is anything that a person adds to it anything that a person adds to it. If I think on a problem for five minutes, my human resource has been used on that problem, all right? And that's what you guys need to realize too, is that you guys are actually all human resources. And right now, what you guys are working on is you guys are gaining the education, maybe you gaining the experience or training to make you a valuable employee somewhere down the road, right? And that's kind of what it is, you know, in a way you can argue that the training is, you know, showing up on time and, and, and kind of going through the motions a little bit. Whereas the education is hopefully you guys are picking stuff up, maybe about the circular flow diagram, who knows? Anyways, but when you talk about that, you're gaining these, this education, this experience and this training to make yourselves, you know, more useful. Not that you're not useful now, but to make yourself useful for somebody else down the line. Maybe an employer, if you're doing an internship or if you have different experiences outside of the school, that's one way that we can look at that. The next type is capital resources, and that's items that are used uh, to assist in the production or distribution of goods or services. So like a capital resource would be anything that's not human and anything that's not our last type of resource, which is natural, right? So when we take a look at that, we're kind of looking at things like roads, all right, bridges, airplanes, trucks, you know, maybe machinery, drill pre presses, uh, welding torches, you know, you name it, we're talking about it as a capital resource. I can't bind two pieces of metal together without a welding machine, right? It's going to be very, very difficult for me to do that. So it's important that we realize where capital resources and how capital resources come into play. Capital resources, I would make the argument, are the most common type of resources that we have. As I'm recording this on a computer, I'm using a capital resource to help deliver education to you guys today. As I look on my desk right now, I've got a calendar made of paper. Well, it's made of paper, which is a natural resource, but the calendar is to help me stay focused and know what's going on on certain days. And that is something that is there for us to look at. So that's anything, railroad, boat, you name it, canal, it's all there. All right. Last one is natural resource. Natural resources are resources that are used to produce goods or services that occur naturally. So like our land is a natural resource, right? The dirt that's below our land is a natural resource. Um, air, wind, the sun, right? These things that aren't man-made, and we may use man-made things to harness them, but they are still 
originally there, and it's important for us to uh, kind of recall with that. All right, so now we get to actually talk about what we're here to talk about today, and that's the circular flow diagram. Like I said in the beginning, it's a graphical representation of how an individual works and buys things in our economy. All right, and you have to think about our economy. And a perfect circular flow diagram is going to be one thing short, and you guys will see what we add at the end. But what we're talking about is we're talking about a graphical representation of how you and I can afford to go to the store and how the store got the things that we want to buy and how a factory wants to produce that by paying workers to work. All right, it seems complicated here, but but bear with me, all right? So our first thing is we're gonna do the circular flow diagram for an automobile car. It doesn't matter what type of car, it doesn't really change, all right? First, you have your household, where you live. That's where you live, that's where you, you kind of stay, all right? You and your household, you work your way up and you go to a product market. Maybe that's an, a car dealership, all right? You spend money on a car in exchange you get a car and that's how that works is that is something that you can see is is a benefit i go to the dealership i try to buy a car i give them money they give me a car right next all right and i may go to a financial institution to get the money to give them to pay for the car next that car came from a factory or firm the dealership didn't make that car there so the dealership had to go through a factory or firm and the dealership had to pay the factory some revenue in order to get the car that I want to buy. And when we work through this, you can kind of slowly but surely see how this is all going to play out. And that's slightly out of order. We go to the resource market, right? And, and I chose to put a mine there for the steel that goes into the car, right? So what we see is we see that the resource market, you know, the labor has to go to, the, to work at the factory, the labor is a resource. That's a human resource. It's available in the resource market. In exchange for the labor working, they get money, which goes back to the resource market. And as you kind of work your way through, you can see that I am a worker. I go to work. I earn an income from the resource market, the labor market there. And what happens is this kind of automatically shows me exactly how our economy works. And the one thing that's key to remember is that we always have to look at money on the outside. And because we're a mixed economy, we always have government in the middle, right? So government may tax my income, a government may tax the sales, a government may tax the factory, and the government may tax the resource market. Government is involved in this, and that's what's important for us to remember. Because we live and work in a mixed economy, somewhere we're interacting with the government and coming in contact with the government. So when we take a look at the household, right, again, household, I get up in the morning and I go to work. And as I go to work, right, I get paid. I get money for going to work, right? In exchange, somebody gets a production of labor from me and uh, get the money goes out to the resource market, right? So the factory is giving it up and that resource market is then paying me. As I go from the factory, I produce a car and I give that car, sell that car to a dealership. In exchange, the dealership is selling me that car. They're making it so that I have to pay for that car as the dealership, right? And then it comes back to me, right? I go to the car dealership. I want to buy a car. I give them money. And they give me a car. So the circular flow diagram works in a way just like this, right? And what we usually see from the government is we usually see them taking money out of the economy, right? Taxes, right? That's where our, our government's most involved and our economy for the most part is in taxes. But when we take a look at that, that's what we kind of actually see as we work through this. So today what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you guys practice kind of putting a couple different products in there and understanding kind of how it goes. And I know this one's backwards, but you guys don't need to worry about it. The graph, the circular flow diagram is basically the most simple way to see the way that our economy works. And because it's simple and because it's easy, it's important that we realize just how easy and simple it actually is. All right. So with that, I hope that this helps. All right. I want to get you guys going. Um, if you have questions, you guys can see me. I'm in the building. Um, just let me know what is going on with that. And uh, yeah, we can talk about things later. Tomorrow, what we'll do is we'll kind of go over some of the things and make sure that we're um, understanding the circular flow diagram and we'll start a project where you actually have to pick 
a product and do the research about the resources that go into it and tell me how you get it, what you have to do to get it. All right. Have a good day and I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care.